So if you have ever spent any time on YouTube as a neat UG aspirant, you have heard these two things come out of every senior's mouth. First of all, NCRT is must. You must read NCRT as many times as possible. Secondly, previous year questions are the most important source for your revision. So solve as many times as you can. But still, even after everybody applies these two things, why is it that some people excel whereas some people still score less? And according to me, it's the way that you approach solving these PYQs that makes the complete difference. So in this video, I'll try my best to give you an algorithm, some steps to follow so that you don't even waste a single previous year question and build up your entire previous year topic, which is very likely to be tested upon the subsequent examination. Otherwise, you'll just open the book, solve a PIQ, forget it, and then it'll come in your examination. And then you'll be like, I have never seen this question in my life before. You should thank yourself that you clicked on this video. If you didn't know me, hi, I'm Dr. Anish Pachel, an MBBS intern at GMC Nagpur, and I scored an all-in rank of 885 in NEET UG. The first thing that you must all know is what is the difference between previous year questions and previous year topics. So I'll give you an example for this. I've got a previous year question book over here. Here's one previous year question for you to solve right now. It's from Biology, Human Health and Diseases. Which of the following is the most common cause of cancer-related deaths associated with tobacco abuse? So options are bladder, liver, lung, and breast cancer. So the real answer to this question is oral malignancies, according to surgery, but here that is not given. So you'll have to follow NCRT, not Bailey and Love for Surgery. So the answer over here is of course lung cancer as we all know, tobacco smoking causes lung cancer. So this is a previous year question. I, I think that almost everyone should get this question right. This was a PYQ. Now what is a PYT? What is a previous year topic? So in human health and diseases, there's this topic called as chemicals and these chemicals becomes your previous year topic. So now you know that human health and diseases, they ask questions from chemicals. So whenever you're reading that chapter, you must always pay very close attention to the chemicals they have mentioned and the diseases that they are linked with. So this is how you connect the PYQs to the PYTs. The book that I'm using over here is Oswald's 36 years previous year question book containing the PYQs of the last 36 years, of course. Uh, it is available for physics, chemistry and biology. I'm using the biology one for the demonstration purposes of this video. Honestly, any PYQ book works, but I just personally love the Oswald book hence I'm using this one so as you can see here on the page they have given the chemicals as the previous year topic and in the chapter being human health and diseases and as you can see the 172 number question appeared from chemicals so that was the difference between PYQs and PYTs and what most people don't understand is that PYQs to important hair but more important than PYQs is the previous year topics because they might not repeat the question as it is but they will definitely repeat the questions from the topic previously asked today they have asked tobacco tomorrow they might ask something like vinyl chloride or they might ask something like smoking. Okay, now that you know what PYTs are, second step that I want you to take is find out the hotspots. The hotspots where the PYTs are accumulated and concentrate your reading based on these hotspots. So what you have to do is just go through the list of PYTs which are already given in this beautiful book and just see from each chapter what are the hotspots that you can find. So in human health and diseases, the diseases and the chemicals are the two things which they really really ask things about. In biomolecules, the enzyme topic is the most important one. Similarly, morphology of flowering plants, placentation and pollination are the hotspots that you should be focusing your attention towards. So whenever you are studying a topic, make sure that these hotspots are the first thing that you study. Because whenever you are trying to study a chapter, the first 15 minutes your concentration is going to be very high. After that, thoda thoda karke will melt. Hone lagega. You must review these hotspots before you go on and move to the other topic. From step 3, that is reading the material in between the hotspots as well. As you all know that this exam, anything can be asked from anywhere. From the NCRT book itself. What you have to realize though is hotspots have to be done first and then the material in between. Invariably you are going to come across facts which you just have to learn and mug up and the most important way to remember this for long term is by reviewing them every day. Make a fact notebook if you want and put all the facts that are difficult for you to memorize. I personally made a sheet and I wrote down all the numerical data which was presented in NCRT in that sheet and I reviewed that sheet over and over again. Mind you, fact based questions are never going to go out of style. They are something that every examiner is going to put a few in every exam. So you have to be careful and read in between the PYQs as well. Basic ideology behind the third point was don't miss out on the important lines of NCRT apart from PYQs because they might not be a PYQ yet, but wo ban but also, also remembering that the hotspots are your go-to spot for the first time. 
If you're using Oswald books, then they have already got a mind map set up for you, which contains almost all the important one-liners, all the important numerical things uh, from every chapter in this 36-year question book itself. So with one look, you can revise the factual data. Let's move on to step four, where I actually teach you how to solve a PYQ. I've got four methods and these four methods, you can use any one of them. And these four methods are going to be your best friends. So find a good source of PYQs and you can use these methods to solve them. I would personally recommend Oswald books of course there's a link in the description if you want to go check them out as you can see on the screen the first method is solve first review later method so what do you mean by solve solve matlab ki you look at the question you take out your answer by your own without any hints without any cheating and that is called solving a question okay reviewing means looking at the answer and trying to understand what went wrong in the question or what is the importance of that question even if you got it correct. So here don't be overconfident and even if you know the question, read the review irrespectively unless you have done that question like 10 times before, only then can you skip it. Sit in one sitting for 3 hours and in 3 hours you solve like maybe 300 questions. 300 questions of PYQs you solve, okay? And then after that take a break of 1 or 2 hours and then go and review. So this is this method which we commonly use when we are solving tests. Now this method is okay, this is good when you don't actually have to worry about uh, what is the answer and you have to do better in your time management abilities. So this method will teach you time management because you can set a timer and in that timer you have to complete PYQs. What will you achieve by doing this? First of all, your PYQs will be done. Secondly, you will learn time management. But the drawback of this method is that when you start to review, it's very difficult to review 200, 300 questions in a stretch. It will take you your entire day. And by the time you reach the important questions at the end, you will be tired and you will feel like I don't want to read this. So here's a big downfall. Hence, I personally do not prefer this method, but this is the only one that we have got when it comes to giving tests. So try to avoid it if possible. As the video goes on, the methods will improve, of course, which brings us to method number two that is the solve and review together this is the most common method that i suggest to anybody who is starting to solve previous year questions okay that means to a question karo and then you read what is the question about what is the answer what this will do to you is that it will make your topic correct right then and there it will teach you the topic right then and there so that next time when you go and give a similar question you might get it correct now this is the most common method that we use when we are solving any question bank so if you got any subscription in your library then you can use this method the explanation provided will be there and you can solve and review together now this is an excellent method in itself but the problem is if you solve 200 questions today and if i ask you three weeks later even after having solved a pyq you will do it wrong when i ask you again because you'll get confused at the same point at the same nidus and so this method again fails but this is good for short term okay okay if you want to sit down and do something about it method number two is good but in the long run it won't really help which brings us to our very 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 important method number three that is solve and review together but also have your source material open next to you for example you're doing biology from oswald's 36 year question book and during solving of a question you encounter a pyq let's say from the topic of hormones from the thyroid hormone and the question is like what happens to the tsh levels in hyperthyroidism so we all know in hyperthyroidism the tsh level goes down immediately go and read the expression as to why that is so the expression will probably be like okay this is a toxic nodule goiter it will continuously secrete t3 t4 which will give the negative inhibition to the tsh causing the tsh levels to go down in hyperthyroidism conditions like grave disease the tsh level will be low so now that you know this fact now go to your ncrt at the same time, open your NCRT and pick out the thyroid gland wala chapter from the endocrine system and read the thyroid gland properly. Read all the different things the NCRT has to offer about it. So in that one particular question, it will take you at least 15 minutes to do just one question. But remember, you are not just doing one question, you are doing a previous year topic from the most important source that is NCRT. So you are doing your BYQ, you are also reading your NCRT. Two things, two most important things that every neat aspirin does, but you are doing it in orderly fashion so that you are focusing on the high yield areas first and then the wasteful areas later. So this is how you solve in the third method which I use every single day whenever I am solving a PYQ for my neat PG examination which was recently postponed. So solve and review and then read the previous year topic right then and there. Again I give you an example. TSH ka question aaya tha, tumne ho correct kar liya. After that go to the thyroid module and read the thyroid module thoroughly. So the next time topics come from thyroid, it might not be TSH. It might be, okay, what is the action of T3 and T4 on the human body? You might know it is increased basal metabolic rate, increased temperature, etc, etc. So this is how you approach a previous year question. 
have you got it now this was the correct method a lot of the people who score less in their examination in the grand test just do method number 2 बस सॉल्व कर लेता है देख लेता है अच्छा इसका ये एक्सप्लेनेशन है ओके ओके आई जस्ट रिमेंबर इट यू वोंट रिमेंबर इट यू वोंट रिमेंबर इट बाय द एंड ऑफ द नाइट सो डोंट फूल योर सेल्फ गो एंड पुट सम एक्स्ट्रा एफर्ट्स एक्स्ट्रा एफर्ट्स इन योर लाइफ विल बी ऑलवेज रिवॉर्डेड ऑलवेज रिमेंबर टू गेट समथिंग एक्स्ट्रा इन लाइफ यू हैव टू वर्क एक्स्ट्रा हार्ड मूविंग ऑन टू मेथड नंबर फोर दैट इज माई पर्सनल फेवरेट मेथड दैट आई वुड रिकमेंड एवरी वन ऑफ यू गाइज टू ट्राई आउट मेथड स्टार्ट विद सॉल्विंग अ पी वाई क्यू जस्ट नॉट जस्ट सॉल्व इट रिव्यू इट एट द सेम टाइम दिस इज वॉट वी हैव बिन डूइंग Next, you go and read that topic from the NCERT. For example, TSH, and then you go read thyroid. And after reading, whatever difficulty that you found in that question, you write it down in your previous year question book. And whenever you are reading your previous year question book again, you are not just going to be reading the most important PYT. You are also going to be solving the PYQ which you just made incorrect or correct once again. So this is how you have to approach. And of course, whenever you are solving, you can refer to your written notebook. to add some additional points in the already written previous year topics or questions or difficult things in your previous year question notebook so this is the number 4 method which is the correct way to solve a pyq in this method you won't be wasting a single question and in this method you will be you know not just you will not just be making your topic thorough but you will be making it thorough so that you can revise it later in the future if you have make if you have made a copy of pyqs and if you read that copy frequently If you read, if you read that notebook frequently, you won't forget that topic ever. The iteration of this book I labeled mistake, mistake book. When I was preparing for NEET, and in my mistake book I used to not just write the PYQs down, but every single wrong, incorrect, be it from a simple normal MCQ to an assertion reason, I used to write down the question, the options, and then the reason of why I did it incorrect and the explanation. And from that one particular notebook, around 60 questions came in the main examination. So this is the fourth method that all the subscribers of this channel should be using. By the way, if you are liking the video so far, please please make sure to subscribe the channel. By subscribing, you automatically become pluripotent. cell which is capable of dividing into any cell that it wants from a neuron to a myocyte to a cardiocyte you can become anything so this is the fourth method again solve review read write go back to solving now this is all in equilibrium that means you can at any point solve and review together review and read together read and write together and solve and write together that's the beauty of this method all right but the video is not over here let me tell you how in your daily life you should incorporate solving pyqs in order to become better at it and not just solving them blindly solving them correctly Let's move on to point number five. That is scheduling time for your PYQs. You might all be having a slot in your day-to-day -day list to solve PYQs. Okay, maybe it might be just one hour, but that one hour is going to be the most high yield hour. Always remember the early morning hours should be utilized for revision. That means revision of theory that you've got. So open up your NCERT, open up any notes that you've got, and start revising them early in the morning. Five, six, seven, eight. जो भी तुम्हारे लिए early होता है. Sit down and read your theory early in the morning. Next, in the late morning, okay, like eight to nine, nine to ten, ten to eleven, that's the time where your brain actually slows down just a little bit, and reading theory becomes a bit difficult. Okay, at that point, start solving your previous year questions. Use the method number four in order to write them down in your PYQ book. Remember, making a PYQ book before NEET will be the single best thing that you do if you start right now, because you will be revising so many topics just by the look of that book. And please make sure that you don't have to write the whole material. You don't have to make a revised NCERT. Just write down the specific points from that one particular paragraph that you've read. So if you've got one paragraph of let's say ten lines, maybe you can write two or three lines about that paragraph in your notebook in a short form manner. Is and the yes, don't write. Flowcharts use karo, animations, diagrams use karo. That will be much better. Is how you schedule your time for solving pyqs number 6 is how many times should you solve the pyqs so this is the biology one this is the physics one and this is the chemistry one so these are the last 36 years ke all the pyqs as you can see it is quite big so if you are able to get through this at least once using the method number 3 or 4 i would say you are done you don't need to solve it again but if you have used method number 1 or 2 any time during a preparation you have to try to solve these with method, method number 3 or 4 at least once so that is how frequently you should solve it of course frequency matlab every day you have to open the book and solve some questions okay biology this is biology as you can see you can do the entirety of biology in i guess 20 days max to max 20 days so this is 20 days chemistry will take you like 
25 days and physics will take you again like 20 days or something in a very reasonable time frame let's say like 50 or 60 days you'll be able to cover it all especially as you keep solving you'll see the topics are repeated so many times that you don't actually have to include them in your book anymore because they're already present you just have to make a small note okay, okay this is repeated so many times here so this is very very important during the day of the examination how many times did i personally solve it i don't even remember at least four to five times i solved it in pyq 36 years ki books i started the serious preparation in december so december to may you can see i had six months and six months is 180 days so in that time i just i just focused and honed all of my energy towards that one goal and that made me achieve my all-inter rank so that is how you have to work for anything that you want in life my last point to everyone who is watching this would be to incorporate daily revisions as a part of your normal routine and if you do that nothing will stop you so yeah, i guess that was the entire video on how you should solve pyqs not to waste them and uh, you know make your life much more better please make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this video i've got the link in the description for this book which i used in the video that is oswal's 36 year pyq book do check them out they're actually genuinely great and they've provided pyts as well all the best for your need examination and if you have any questions i'll be in the comments bye